Acrylic or sapphire? It's the age-old debate. Some feel that the distortions of plexiglass gives a watch that vintagey charm, but others prefer the carefree scratch resistance of sapphire crystal. Now, traditionally, it's been hard to mill sapphire into a high dome shape to give us the distortions of a plastic crystal, but Yun Hans seems to have figured this out. So in this episode, let's take a look at the newest Max Bill Chronoscope, one of my favorite Bauhaus watches, now fitted with a crystal that should be the best of both worlds. Hey guys, I'm Max and this is WatchCrunch. WatchCrunch.com was built from the ground up to be a modern platform for talking watches, all with proprietary space age technology to filter out negativity and snobbery. So the Max Bill line of watches needs little introduction if you've been in the hobby for a while. The man was an industrial designer who was a student of the original 1920s Bauhaus school. That school was established following World War I kind of as a direct response to the Art Nouveau movement that preceded it. And it emphasized utilitarianism over gratuitous ornamentation. This form follows function ethos can be seen both in this line of watches, but also in like everyday objects around us even today. Everything from furniture to electronics. In fact, Johnny Ive, the designer of the original iPhone, attributed much of his design influence from the masters of Bauhaus. So I've owned the classic three-hand version of the Max Bill, and something funny happened with that watch. I didn't really like it out of the box, but after wearing it for a few weeks, I started to learn to love the beauty and its simplicity, and eventually it became a staple of my collection until I gave it away to an architect friend of mine, but in its place, I've finally gotten around to replacing it with this chronoscope. For those who want just a little bit more going on with the dial, this watch very much follows the same design aesthetic, but with an additional function. So the 40 millimeter chronograph is a textbook example of how numbers don't tell the full story. So this case measures 14 and a half millimeters thick, which is a little worrisome, but don't be put off by the numbers because first the lugs are extremely short, extending the length of the watch just by one millimeter in either direction. Next, both the crystal and the case back are domed, combining to give the watch a kind of space saucery shape. And from the side on, it tapers to a thin edge, completely hiding that thickness. So due to these clever designs, this watch wears kind of like a 38 by 13, which feels great on my six and a half inch wrist. Okay, so now let's talk about this new crystal. First of all, it definitely changes the feel of the watch. If you're used to the acrylic Max Bills, the first thing you'll notice actually is a weight increase. And I think that in order to maintain the structural integrity of the sapphire glass, they had to keep the crystal relatively thick along the edge, making the watch feel a little bit top heavy. Next, sapphire just feels different. It feels colder and you can check this, I learned from Mark at Long Island Watch by putting it up against your forehead and sapphire will feel uncomfortably cold against your skin compared to plastic. Now, all of these things are not necessarily bad. In fact, I remember my old Max Bill was so light that it bordered on feeling a little cheap. So it's just good to be aware of these differences with the new updated watch. Now in the appearance department, a new look for the Max Bill line was unveiled in 2020. You can still buy the old version alongside this, but the new design features a higher contrast aesthetic. Gone are the polished steel hands. Instead, we get hands finished in a lacquered black color, still with loom centers. The markings along the edge of the dial, like in the minute track and such, are done in a lighter gray color, creating a nice contrast while maintaining still that gray scale color scheme. And it looks really amazing over an eggshell textured white dial. Now we have sub registers at the 12 for a 30 minute counter and at the six for a 12 hour counter. Uh, there is a day and date function at the three and the brand name at the nine. Now placing these four elements in the four cardinal directions gives the style a really pleasing symmetry. Uh, the elements are well balanced, but they differ enough visually to still be interesting. To continue the high contrast theme, the entire case is anodized black, but 
If you look closely, it's not like a jet black. When the light hits it, it gives off a warm hue, almost like a pewter color with a bit of a metallic glisten. On the case back, we get the signature of Max Bill, the designer. And inside it lives the venerable Vauju 7750, a chronograph movement for the ages. The 7750 was designed in the 70s, and this sort of no-nonsense horizontal clutch cam-operated chrono was built as a budget alternative to the then high-strung Zenith El Primero movement. And it really sort of democratized the chronograph for everyday people to be able to afford. And wearers will be familiar with its clicky feel and that quirky rotor wobble due to its unidirectional winding mechanism. And when it comes time to service it, it's so ubiquitous that most watchmakers should be able to handle the job. On the wrist, the new Maxfield chronoscope is still quintessential Bauhaus, which is to say that it impresses with its effortless simplicity and class, but now in a fresh new look. The Bauhaus style has unfortunately been bastardized by fashion brands, everything from Daniel Wellington to MVMT, you've seen them, but with a real Max Bill watch, you notice all the small details revealing themselves to you over time. Things like a slight bend at the tips of the hands to duck under the crystal, the quirky font on the dial for the numerals, the flat piston pump pushers that make operating the thing a tactile treat. So this watch ships with a gray cowhide strap that is neither inspiring nor repulsive. It's supple and does sort of agree with the watch's monotone aesthetic, but to me it lacks any real texture. And that's why I prefer it on this strap banded herringbone fabric strap. It picks up nicely on the dark tones of the watch and the fabric material also does a, a great job to soften up that stern German seriousness about the watch. The great thing about a Max Bill is that it looks right in a lot of occasions. You can wear this thing with a button up or dress it down with a t-shirt. Just don't jump in the pool given it's limited 30 meters of water resistance. Now, if I was to build a three watch collection, this would be high on my list as the dressier piece. Now, speaking of prices, the Chronoscope has grown to about $2,500 for this new version, which isn't cheap, especially considering you can get the three-hand max bill with the ETA 2824 for half that, but I still feel like it's well worth it for such an iconic watch from a renowned brand. But what do you think about the new Max Bill? Do you like these changes, like the sapphire and the high contrast look, or do you prefer the older design? Let's continue the conversation on watchcrunch.com. I'll leave a link in the pinned comments below for a more extended discussion. As always, stay crunchy. I'll see you in the next one.